Activation period is over. Now I am putting the tubes into the Cirafuge so that we'll spin them for, sorry, we'll spin them for four, 15 seconds and then we'll read the 37 uh, phase of the tubes. So right now we're doing still both patients. <clears throat> we're doing one that should have an antibody that I added to the patient to make it positive and one that is still continuing to be negative. All right, so we're taking these out now. This is the patient in the back. That's supposed to be the positive patient. This is supposed to be the negative patient. All right. <clears throat> so auto controls. Okay. So this is the positive patient. This is auto control and cell three. Those are negative. Cell number one and two. So cell number two is negative. Cell number one looks positive. <clears throat> but most likely that positivity looks like it actually went away. Uh, you could look at this under the microscope to see if it truly is negative or not. Sorry, that was cell number two. I've got them mixed up. So cell number one, up oh, cell number one does have agglutinates in it. I don't think the computer, or sorry, the, uh, I don't think the camera's gonna pick that up. Do you see the tiny, there we go, the tiny, tiny pieces there? Okay, so that looks like it's a weak reaction, or a one. <clears throat> So that was cell one for patient, the patient um, that's positive. So I'm just going to put that it's a one plus. Auto control was negative. Now we'll do the supposed to be negative patient. These are cells one and two. So they're still negative. This is cell three and the auto control. And those are negative. <clears throat> so this patient is still looking like they're negative. So now we're going to do the wash step. So with the wash step, I'm going to add saline three quarters of the way up on each tube and um, gently resuspend them. Spin them for 15 seconds, and then we'll read for agglutination just like other things. <clears throat> well, we, I'm sorry, we won't read for agglutination until after uh, we do this process uh, three to four times. So um, we, will, we will wash them by putting uh, saline, three quarters of the way up the tube. We gently resuspend them and put them into the serifuge. Then we bring them out, dump the saline off the top, keeping the button at the bottom. And then <clears throat> we do the process over again. So we're going to do that three to four times. And at the end, 
we're going to decant all the way instead of um, instead of keeping um, a little bit in there and then we'll add the AHG reagent. All right, so this is the first time. See the line and then the button at the bottom? We'll put them in the, the rack real quick and I'll pour them off. I'll show you the first time and then uh, I'll just do the other times without the camera so that way I can just get this done quickly. Okay, so let's see. All right, so we have the, the line up on top and we're just going to pour it out and see we still have cells at the bottom. Okay, a little bit of saline still there. All right, so again, line at the top, button at the bottom, still there. And I'm doing this for both patients. Line at the top, button at the bottom, still there. <clears throat> And same thing with the last two. Okay. All right, so that's what you have to worry about is making sure that you keep the button there. If you don't have the button there at the end, you're going to not get results like expected. So we're adding the saline for the second time. So we're washing, whoops. We're washing this the second time, these cells. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get rid of any unbound antibodies that may be present in the suspension. So we had just added two, um, <clears throat> excuse me, two drops of Lys and we incubated them for 30, at 37 degrees for 30 minutes. Lys is supposed to make it so that um, the incubation time goes down, but we tend to use um, expired reagents in our courses because we're not releasing patient results. So uh, we, we don't always have uh, brand new reagents and therefore they will uh, possibly have a weaker reaction than um, reagents that would be uh, still good and so what we did was we just go ahead and we also um, extend the incubation time to 30 minutes instead of like the 15 that you can do with LIS and so uh, we're doing that right now what's going to happen now is when we get um, the when we get the wash step done we're going to add the polyclonal anti-human globulin uh, reagent. And what this is, is, or polyspecific, sorry. Um, what this is, is that this reagent has both human anti-IgG and anti-C3D. Uh, okay, so if we have, um, if we have a reaction that is hemolytic or positive, um, for agglutination, then that means that the uh, cells are coated with anti, or sorry, coated with IgG or C3D. Now, if the reactions are negative, we would then <clears throat> see if the entire, if the entire line was negative, we would add the check cells. And the check cells actually do have, or Coombs control you can call them check cells or Coombs control. They are coated with IgG, okay? So this is a control that would help to uh, see if you did add the antiglobulin reagent uh, correctly. All right, so I'm gonna pull the, pull the tubes out and continue with my wash step. Okay, so now I have done all my wash steps. I decanted, um, 
out the last bit of the um, <clears throat> of the last wash. Now I'm adding the poly specific um, IgG. We're doing one one drop poly specific IgG in anti C3D. So again, we're using reagent red cells. So the reason that there would be any antibody coating the red cell uh, or um, complement coating the red cell would be because the patient has an antibody to reag or sorry reagent cell antigens. Okay, so the proteins on the reagent patient or the reagent donor cells. Uh, are reacting with what is in the patient's plasma. So that's why we're doing this. So we're trying to detect, to, sorry, see if that was really happening, okay? So we added, we added the, um, we added the one drop of AHG reagent. I use the polyspecific, um, we, are going to spin them and then we're going to look for agglutination and that would be the final uh, phase of this and if all of them are negative then you add or if all of the phases are added oh my gosh I'm so sorry I'm getting tongue-tied uh, if all of the reactions in all the phases of a particular donor um, cell were negative then we would add the check cells if not like um, cell one of this patient, we would not add the check cells, okay? Check cells, again, are reagent cells that we know already have the uh, IgG coding on them, the IgG antibodies. So if we added the anti-human globulin reagents, then the check cells would be positive. If we did not add the reagent like we were supposed to in the AHG phase, then the results would be negative. Okay, so these are all of the cells. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look for agglutination at the AHG stage phase. Okay, so as expected, Cell one and two for the negative patient are negative, and three, three and the auto are negative. Oops, on that patient. Oh well, I'll get that in a minute. Okay, so one and two of the positive patient. Let's see that. And again, um. Not all immunoglobulins are going to react at the AHG, okay? So IgM would not. That IgM would react in the first phase, the immediate spin. And IgG would react in the 37, possibly in the AHG. Okay, so this is cell 3 and the... Um, auto control and those are negative. So let's take a closer look at cell one. Since last time we knew on this patient that they were really small. Yes, there are agglutinates in there. It's very hard for my camera to focus, but you can kind of see those dots. So last time we said it, there were there was a one plus. This is now weak. Okay, it's very hard to see. All right, so now. Let's record those. So we have, whoops, we have weak, positive, and this is negative, negative, negative. So we have to add the check cells only to these three, okay? With this patient, we had negative all the way, so we're going to need to add check cells for all four of those. Okay, so. Let's do the check cells now.